his saying, fake it till you make it. I mean, he's not made, he's not made it, but transpires that Wayne has taken all of the money from his dad's pension, withdrawn it, and has used it over the last couple of years, going on holiday, going out, getting drunk, designer clothes, holidays, Dubai, Las Vegas, the nights out, the cocktail bars, showing off, shopping in designer shops, traveling, living a high life. I first come across him before I started in CID early 2018. I was working as a, like a response CBM in Longridge. A job came in that he had failed to pay for a meal in a restaurant. When I got the details from the restaurant, this male Wayne Skinner, who wasn't really known to the police, brought him in, interviewed him. He came across as just a nice, a nice, perfectly presentable young man. He had a suit on, you know, he was polite, he was friendly, and I felt sorry for him. The director of an aerospace company came in um, with a load of documents, a file full of documents saying that one of his staff members had been defrauding the company for about four years. And he sits down with me, start chatting about it. And he said, so this lad, Wayne Skinner, he names him as, and straight away I was like, oh, hang on, I've just interviewed him a couple of weeks ago. And the director of that company has come to me and said his name, and it had been happening for about four years since the date of his employed him, then I knew straight away that there was more to him than what I initially thought at the beginning, so he'd kind of fooled me in a way as well. He was sat on the couch, he had a brand new iPhone next to him, still unboxing it, and he had a Santander bank statement, or a few pages of one, in his dad's name. Now, there was only Wayne in the house, um, and it had transpired that when we picked up the bank statement and looked at it, his dad is a... Uh, He's in his 50s, he's an older man, um, but this bank statement was showing transactions at cocktail bars in Manchester, in Liverpool, in London. Purchases that you wouldn't expect his dad to be making, so there was a suspicion raised straight away. It was seized. Um, we interviewed him for the the company stuff, the, in, the frauds and the thefts against that, and he admitted it. He said, yep, I'm sorry, I'm stupid. What Wayne does though, he will only answer a question at that time directly. If I ask him, did you do X, Y, and Z? He'll say, yes. Why did you do that? I don't know, I was stupid. And he'll only wait for me to ask him a direct question before he answers it. Thinking back, probably because he's got that much of a web of lies going on that he doesn't know what we know and what we don't. So he doesn't want to slip up and tell us something that we didn't know about. Some of the phone work that we did throughout, it's been quite upsetting really because his mum being deaf, a lot of the contact is via text message and she texts him and one of the messages that stands out is her saying, Wayne, please help me. It's in, this is in winter, N no food, no light, no electricity, cold. Like, she texts quite direct as she would speak using sign this out. Uh, but she says, no food, no electricity, no light, please help. And, and he's responded, rudely, quite sharp, saying, Mum, leave me alone, I'm busy, I'm at work, we'll talk tomorrow, someone along those lines, but it was just the way it was written. At that time, his phone puts him, and the usage on his Apple Pay on his phone puts him in London. Uh, I think he was actually in the Shard on that occasion, drinking cocktails, you know, doesn't care, but it was using her money to do that, and she's literally got nothing, not a penny at this time. It must be the hardest thing for a parent to have to do. One, to listen to us saying what he's doing to her, but to accept that her son, the person who she trusts above anybody else to look after her well-being, her finances, that her son is willing to do the lowest of the law. He's stealing every penny she's got. And she's still, to this day, although she was supportive of the prosecution, she just she worries about him. She worries about how her son's doing. And, she just wants him to get help and she doesn't understand why he would do it to her. I mean, to steal from any member of the deaf community and to use their disability to your advantage in order to steal from them, it's, well, I can't think of much lower to use a disability against someone to steal. It's like stealing from the elderly, stealing from any vulnerable person. It's disgusting. But compound that with the fact that these are his parents, the people who, you know, trust him and want to, uh, the best for him and just him to help them and it it, it makes it even worse and I, I, I can't even think of the words to, to use to say it. Your lifestyle. I see pictures and messages about you 
um, travelling up and down the country, spending money in hotels, taking ladies out on dates, uh, going to posh places, wearing designer clothes, um, a lifestyle which I believe your mum has paid for. And I think that's the reason why you've been stealing money from your mum, is to have this lifestyle. And that is how it will be presented to the Crown Prosecution Service. Because you're not a drug addict, you're not an alcoholic. Um, we're giving you opportunities to tell us if you're in debt, if people are coming after you, if you've got any issues. Is there any reasonable explanation you can tell us that you needed that money more than anything? to do this horrible thing to your mum, you had to get that money. And there is none of those reasons. It's purely greed. You've had your mum's money away so you can have a nice time and load it up. Is how it looks to me. And I'm a reasonable guy. When I, I'm not, like I said, I don't judge people. I'm a reasonable person. But that is how it looks and that's how will probably present this case to the Crown Prosecution Service. Something that really struck with me, um, and I, I, I was hoping that we weren't going to have to talk about it, to be honest, because I think it paints you in a really bad light. But it's a almost like a, a motto of yours um, called um, Fake It Till You Make It. What does that mean? You're not sure. You t you've written it. It's a motto of yours. So you tell me what that means. Fake it till you make it. What does that mean? Be something you're not. Be something you're not. Yeah, I think so. You are pretending in your lifestyle to be a man of means. You are pretending that you've got cash to splash quite extravagant. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. And you use this motto, fake it till you make it, because you're not a man of means. You're not a millionaire. You haven't won the lottery. And you're not in a very well-paid job. So, you're faking it you're faking it is you using your family's money that you've taken without their consent. Am I right? 